guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making a music stand. I'm not really sure of how it is that I'm going to go about this, and this may end up being a multi-part build video depending on how uh, how intense it gets or, you know, how into the build we get. It's hard to say at this point. Um, what I did was I googled images of wooden music stands and uh, I came up with a bunch of images that I liked and then I clicked on the one that I liked the most and it turns out that it's, it's from an old book from, um, I believe it was Fine Woodworking and um, I ended up being able to track that down so I'm going to loosely base it on that. And uh, I think the way we're going to start is we're going to start with the lamination for the lathe work of this particular project. And for this particular project as well, um, I've chosen that I'm going to make the entire thing out of oak. So let's start off with the lamination of the body of the, uh, of the music stand. Well, in order to start with the lamination, of course, we need to understand what it is that we're going to be doing. And normally for the top of the pedestal or the top of the music stand, um, I would have liked to turn it all in one piece. But unfortunately, um, I don't have that ability because I only have a, a mini lathe and I believe my turning capacity is all of um, 16 inches so I have to work with that. So this is the rough shape of what I'd like to see for the main body of our um, music stand and there will be a three quarter inch hole right through there just like that and that will be our height adjustment for our music stand. This is very distorted obviously and and I, I'm not too particular on the the actual um, shape of it here. I'm going to turn it and just see how it works out. But because of the the length restrictions of my lathe I'm going to have to make two separate turnings and I'm thinking that what I'm going to do is I'm going to join these here with a mortise and tenon type of a deal um, so that this top kind of vase piece fits down into the base where our legs go and our legs will be dovetailed into this section here just like that. So from this point here up to this point here I'm kind of thinking that this might be 16 inches high and then whatever my lathe will allow I'm gonna make the tenon just that much longer to go down into the base piece for the legs and this base piece down here will end up being seven and a half inches long from top to bottom and then in that respect I'll have to do two turnings but because of my tool restriction here I don't really have a choice and I'm okay with that so what I'm going to start with is uh, I've got some rough cut red oak and uh, I've cut them four inches by 18 inches long and they're eight quarter stock. So we're going to start off by roughing or sorry by taking them over to the jointer and uh, cleaning up two of the edges and giving us a, a, a good reference to work from. Once you get your pieces off of the jointer, don't forget to take a straight edge and check from corner to corner to make sure that it's perfectly flat. Um, if you apply pressure on the in-feed table instead of the out-feed uh, or a weird mixture of both, you'll end up with actually planing an arc, so or a concave arc or, you know, uh, either way check it with your straight edge. As well, once you um, get the 
perpendicular surface planed, get a trusted square with a light source behind it and check it all the way along the length of the board to make sure that you do have two surfaces that are 90 degrees to each other. Now that we have that done, uh, we need to cut a dado in the center of this board end to end and that will be for the shaft of our um, music stand to slide up and down in to give us our height adjustment. However, uh, I just want to touch briefly on um, lamination and choosing the direction of your grain. So let's head over to the bench and I'll see if I can give you a quick little drawing and just explain it to you what it is that we're looking to achieve for this step. Well if you're able to get three inch by three inch stock um, to turn the pieces of this music stand this lamination isn't going to be an issue for you and um, you can just bore with an auger bit your three uh, quarter of an inch diameter hole from end to end and you're good to go. I don't have that luxury so I have to laminate and we're going to be looking at the end grain of the board here so here will be our two pieces laminated together and I'll just draw a second one here so I can show you the difference. Um, if you align your grains so that they're like this, sorry I'm no artist, what's going to happen when you turn your piece is that if this is your lamination line your grains will all converge into the center, basically what they're doing is pointing out your glue joint. They're pointing right at it saying, look at me, look at me. So we're trying to avoid that. So what we're going to uh, pay attention to when laminating these pieces together is we want to keep the grain orientation or the growth rings the same. So this will be our laminated center and we will have a dado three quarter by three quarter cut out of there. And uh, let me just color that in so it shows a little better. But what's going to happen with that is even on the grain lines and here is your glue line in the center. Because the grain is all the growth rings are all the same way in the lamination. It will just carry on through you're turning and although it will not make this glue line invisible it will go a long way to helping to conceal it so you're not drawing your eye towards this lamination line. So I, I just wanted to discuss that and uh, make sure because it could be really disappointing to do the turning and have that glue line accentuate it. So just pay attention to your growth rings and the way they go and uh, when you glue everything together hopefully you will have a fairly concealed uh, lamination line. So now that I've got that off my chest we're gonna head over to the saw and I'm gonna set up the dado blade for a three-quarter of an inch dado. Three-quarter inch dado blade is set up and uh, to a height of three eighths of an inch and I've set the fence here so that our dado will be roughly roughly we're going to trim it up later uh, in the center of our block on our flattened side of the lamination um, so you really want to pay attention here you've already laid it out to get your your grain and your growth rings going the right way and now make sure that everything is set up right so that when you run these dados through and you end up sandwiching the two pieces together that your dados are going to line up. With the dado cut and everything ready to go, we're ready for the glue up. And uh, I'll just run through the process here with you. Um, I have some 
wax here. It's basically a, a, a wax compound. And I'm going to be applying that to a piece of hardwood. There's a scrap of walnut that I've cut to three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch. And the way this is going to work is I'm going to apply glue to our surfaces here and then we're going to get these things laminated together. Once we get that in place and we've got a generous coating of wax on this particular three-quarter by three-quarter inch uh, piece, we're going to line it up in our hole and then we're going to use our wackometer or our lovely mallet that we made and I'm going to drive this piece home. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to do two things. It's going to align our pieces of oak perfectly so that our uh, dados line up beautifully for our final product. And as well, it's going to push all of the squeeze out from inside out the other end of our board. So it's going to clean up the inside of our um, dado as well as line everything up. So that's the process. And then we're going to leave this whole assembly clamped up uh, until that glue is completely dry. And uh, once it's dry, we'll trim it down to a smaller workable size. And then we're going to get it on the lathe. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's start with getting it glued up. This wax compound is going to do two things as well. Uh, number one, it's going to help uh, to keep the piece of walnut from gluing itself to the inside of our oak. And as well, it's going to help in a little bit of lubrication to shoot that through or to help us get it through that tight dado blade. So don't be shy. Give it a good, generous coating. Get a nice coating of glue on there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, once the, the clamps get on there, and I'm going to be using bar clamps for this, I mean, um, they're going to make sure that you've got glue in all the spaces that you, you need it. So just get a nice generous coating of glue on there. Now when I was checking and verifying for grain direction on mine, I made some marks on the end of numbers here to make sure that I align it correctly. So I'm just going to ensure that I have the right number on the right side. And we're just going to slap that just like that, making sure that we're nice and, uh, and even on the end. And then we're going to set it in our bar clamp and we're just going to start some initial pressure here. And I mean, like I said, uh, we're going to hammer that three quarter inch bar home there to, to help us with alignment. But for now, we're just going to get a bar clamp on here to help us with this. And now that we've got that in place, we're going to get this waxed up three quarter by three quarter piece lined up at that hole and uh, I just don't have enough hands to do everything at once here so bear with me and uh, we're going to get this put into place. There we go, drove that home rather nicely. And on the other end, we should have quite a bit of squeeze out coming out there. And yeah, there's uh, quite a pool about to exit. Let me just drive this the rest of the way home and I'll show you what we've got. And there it is on the opposite end. Um, you can see how that is pushing all of that squeeze out out of the way as well as helping to um, guide everything in. 
uh, and keep all that dado aligned. So I'm going to throw a couple more clamps on this. Once I get it securely clamped in place, I'm going to drive that three quarter by three quarter inch piece of walnut right out of that thing and uh, I'm going to let that glue up set up. Well that assembly now is sitting off to the side. We're going to have to leave it overnight. Uh, I wouldn't even chance turning that on the lathe until I know that glue up is completely dry. But we're going to need one more glue up and that glue up needs to be um, seven and a half inches long um, by three inches by three inches. Now there's no center hole through this. Um, this will be for the base of the pedestal of the whole music stand. Um, so all we're going to do for that is I've got an off cut of the oak. I'm going to lop it off again checking for that grain direction to make sure that we're still good with that and uh, I'm going to apply the glue and laminate two pieces together and although it won't be three inches by three inches we're going to do all the trimming of this uh, down to size later once all the glue ups are complete. So you guys don't need a, a video of that. How hard is it to glue up pieces of board basically to, to get your final blank. Uh, seven and a half inches long and it has to end up being three by three. So go ahead and glue that up and uh, I'll see you afterwards. Well the lower half of that uh, pedestal is glued up and there's nothing more we can do with that other than wait for the glue to dry. Um, but in the meantime I'm going to place that aside and we're going to start drawing out the template for our legs for this particular music stand. So for that we're going to need a piece of one-eighth of an inch hardboard. Well we're going to start marking out our legs and I really don't have much to go on here um, but I do know that I'm going to be leaving this one edge here which is three-eighths of an inch wide and that will be our dovetail that is going to be going into um, our main pedestal base. So I've marked that as well. The length of the or the whole spread or footprint of this leg, I've got nine and three eighths from the inside edge where the dovetail ends to the outside edge. And I know that I'd also like to have this nine inches in height. So from the bottom here, I'm just going to mark my nine inches across. Now as well with that nine inches, the section of the leg that actually makes contact with our pedestal, um, that is going to be three inches in height. So at six inches from the bottom, we're going to put another mark. Now, like I said, I really don't have much of a, a plan for this. I'll just change the paper here to sort of show you what I'm thinking of. This will be the bottom of our turned pedestal uh, with our fancy dancy turnings or whatever up there. Uh, don't worry about that. I'm not very good on the lathe. So at this point, what we're going to have this will be our three inch mark from here to here and when we turn this three eighths or three inch cylinder there will be an overhang here which will help to hide any of our little imperfections because we're going to be cutting these dovetails by hand. Now <clears throat> that three inches coincides with this three inches right here. So we'll just put that like this and we'd like to have our leg come down something like this and then be flat on the bottom and then <clears throat> come up matching again with our three inches. Now that obviously is just a rough sketch and I don't know what happened down here. It went a little wonky with the foot but we're going to play with this and see if we can't get ourselves a half decent pattern or um, almost like a cabriolet leg for this assembly. So using French curves or just freehand it, whatever you can do, 
Draw out your pattern so that it's going to match this footprint of nine inches in height and the whole nine and three eighths across from the top to the, by the time it gets down here, you know, giving nice gentle swoops. And I'm gonna draw that out and uh, you can draw your own out and see how we make out in the end. And uh, I'll come back to you when I'm done. Uh, I think I've decided that I like this particular layout that I have here. I think that'll look really classy. So I'm going to take this over to the scroll saw and cut this template out and make sure that it's the exact shape that I want. And we're going to um, mill the wood for this once we get the template cut out. And I'm going to discuss um, that in detail once we have this part uh, set, but don't rush this process. Make sure that what you have here is what you like and what you want, because each one of these legs is going to be identical to this template. So take your time and do this part right. So here's our template and I've got a nice chunk of red oak here to cut our legs out of and in a nutshell what we're going to end up doing is cutting the legs out of material that is one and one eighth of an inch thick. Now the important part here is grain alignment. And it's not even to make it aesthetically pleasing. It's not to make it pretty or anything like that. It's all about the strength at this point in time. You can see on this piece of stock that the grain is all going this way. If I just lay my leg like that, trace it out and cut it, sure, it looks beautiful. But the problem is you've got your grain going across some very, very narrow parts and in the areas where the stress is being placed, which is up here on that dovetail, it's putting some serious pressure on this section with, a, with the uh, very short grain here and absolutely zero strength. I give this no time flat before the legs are broken off of this particular piece. You'd hate to go through all that work and have the legs break off of it. So what I'm going to suggest to you is to align your leg pattern like this so that your grain is going in the length of the leg. That will give it the, the uh, optimum amount of strength when the whole thing is put together. So I'm gonna cut this blank into the width of pieces that I need. I'm gonna uh, take it over to the jointer and straighten it all out and uh, resaw it and plane it to its thickness of one and an eighth. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut these legs out of the oak stock.
you've got the pieces playing to their thickness of one and one eighth of an inch thick and they're marked out again paying attention to which way the grain is running and I'm going to take these over to the scroll saw and cut them out. Now you can use the bandsaw, the scroll saw, I mean you can do whatever you want with these. You can drill holes all the way around the perimeter until it pops out. But um, there's no right way, there's no wrong way here. So I'm going to cut them on the scroll saw, if it'll take it, we'll see. And then I'm going to take it over to the sander and clean it up and sand up to the line. So I'm just going to cut just outside. And I should end up with three of these legs. Uh, I think I forgot to mention that. So we're going to require three of these pedestal legs. So go ahead and do that. Just so you know that uh, number seven, brand new number seven reverse tooth blade took on the inch and an eighth oak just fine. So uh, if that's the route you want to go, works really well. I've got the three legs cut and now I'm going to head over to the oscillating sander and sand them all up to the line. Um, once I get all the curved edges done and sand it to where I like them, I'm going to clamp them all together and then take them over to the disc or maybe even the belt sander and level out the flat spots on these just to make sure that they're all identical. Um, so we'll level out this area here where the dovetails are going to go as well as the base down here which will be sitting on the floor. Um, so that'll be our next step. And that would be all the time that we have for this week. Um, we've got some good progress uh, throughout the day with the lamination for the pedestal part, uh, the top end of it. Um, that's all glued together and awaiting turning on the lathe, as well as the base, which will um, end up with the dovetails in it um, to accept the three legs of the pedestal. Uh, so all in all, we've got a lot of progress done here and a lot of work completed, but there's still a lot more to go. So hopefully you guys are going to join me again next week when I'll bring you part two of making a, um, a music stand. But until such time, that's it for this week, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed the show. Guys, thanks for joining me, and I'm going to see you again next week with yet another woodworking video.